Hey everybody, and welcome back. Today's video is called, I'm never using Recoil.js, asterisk, uh, because I don't need it. Sorry if that title was a little bit too clickbaity. I just wanted to kind of pull you in. I've had a few people ask me some questions and comments on Twitter as well. Uh, will I do a video about Recoil.js? What do I think about Recoil.js? Are you recoiling from Recoiling.js? I am. Uh, but not for the reasons that you might think about. The honest to God's truth is that I have no need for Recoil.js, uh, which is to say that the reason that Recoil.js, in case you're not aware about what Recoil.js is, it's a new state management library from a team within Facebook. So to be clear, it's not the React core team, it's a team inside of Facebook that has some needs for an application and created Recoil.js to fit their needs and then open sourced it. So very easily confused because it's from Facebook, but two separate teams entirely. And the issues that this team was trying to solve was having a application with a lot of data in it that had to update different parts of the application when one piece of data changed. And the issues that they were running into using just vanilla context was that the updates with context are simple to put it in those words. They're not the, they're not geared to the type of application this team had to deal with. So as a result, they kind of built this layer on top of context, still trying to embrace React.js uh, idioms, and made Recoil.js to make it such that if one atom, in their own words, changes, then all dependent components would be discreetly updated in a uh, performant and easily, mostly easily maintainable manner. And frankly, I don't have those needs. Most of my applications are, uh, I'm not gonna say they're simple CRUD apps, but they are. Um, they're in the sweet spot about of what React caters towards. I don't have a highly complex mapping application that I need data to stay synchronized. My applications are uh, simpler than that. So I don't have any need for Recall.js, hence I'm not going to be using it. And that's just the thing. Uh, you can actually get very far with React with just using the built-in hooks that are now provided in React Core. You can use use reducer, you can use context, and for most applications, you will be fine. And honestly, that is my advice. Uh, use the built-in utilities in React, and if you find yourself encountering performance issues, then start looking for these other things like Recall.js and, and the like. Uh, don't start with Recall.js. I mean, if you're curious, sure. If you're curious, sure, look into it, have fun. But if you're trying, trying to ship something, just use what it comes with. It's more than fine and it suits my needs fully. And then to critique uh, Recall.js a little bit, and this is me with a armchair critique because I didn't code anything about it. Uh, uh, no offense to the maintainers, please don't take any ill will towards this. Um, this is my lament as an older programmer now, which is a sad thing to say and to hear myself say. And when I looked into the API of Recall.js, I just wanted more by there being less APIs, which is a silly thing to say a little bit, but um, using Recall.js will require some knowledge. And that's fine. Most libraries require you to learn them before you can use them. But um, for a state management library, I'm spoiled by knowing what's possible. I've used MobX in the past where you just access properties on objects and MobX will auto-magically, for better or for worse, uh, track those changes and then update your components. And then I've used Immer and that API is lovely. I will say though that the benefit of how Recoil has uh, approach things is that it's very um, React centric, which means that it has a greater chance of being eventually concurrent mode uh, supportive, which is still a ways 
away. I wish there was just less that I'd have to learn to use it. And then, you know, to kind of wrap things up, uh, you don't really need to play with everything new, right? Like I've, I've used React with set state. I've used hooks. I, I definitely have used new things as they come out. And for whatever reason, uh, Recoil JS didn't really hit my pleasure button, which feels gross to say. I'm fine with Redux for my global state tree. Um, I'm actually fine with just context and use reducer. I think that's fine for most of my use cases. Again, to the creator's benefit, this was created to solve a very specific issue, uh, a very specific problem that they had in their own application. And if you don't have that same type of problem, don't use it. Just don't. You can play with it if you want, if you're curious, but in terms of uh, needing to know it, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my former self would be yelling at me right now because uh, my former self would always try out everything new and I just don't have the time or energy anymore. It's sad. I'm getting older. And just in case it wasn't clear, I mean no ill will towards Recoil.js and the maintainers. I think it's a really cool library. I think the problem space is very hard. I just don't, I think there's definitely a aspect in the community where anything from Facebook is gospel. And it's not true. You can think for yourself. You can do what you need to do. So no, no disrespect to them, but like, to all you out there, uh, relax. It's cool. What you are using right now still works. Um, were you working on an application that had performance issues? Maybe Recoil just is a good idea. If not, just relax JS, which means just like get off the computer and watch a TV show. So that's my thoughts on Recoil JS. Uh, sorry for the clickbaity title. I figured it'd be fun. This is YouTube after all, right? Gotta have some clickbait sometimes because how else will we survive? I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in your comments if you are using Recoil.js and if I'm flat out wrong. I'm not, I'm never wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> uh, I'll see you again in the next video next week. Till then.